हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द वीडियो ऑफ प्रोसेस ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो बेसिक्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट व्हाट इज रिमोट सेंसिंग व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन व्हाट इज इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड स्पेक्ट्रल सिग्नेचर्स एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिमोट sensing about what are the components of this remote sensing so the remote sensing first component is energy source which can be a sun or an artificial source second component is a medium or carrier which is electromagnetic radiation third component is the target or area under study fourth component is you should have a sensor to detect this electromagnetic radiation so fourth component is sensor fifth component is reception center so the data from the sensor is sent to the receiving stations on the earth and fifth is the data analysis and application where the analysis of data which is received from the receiving station is analyzed and it is made available to us on our devices in the form of information now let's review our electromagnetic spectrum so in our first video basics of remote sensing we have discussed electromagnetic spectrum in detail so the electromagnetic spectrum is basically divided into seven regions gamma ray x ray ultraviolet visible infrared microwave and radio waves so yeah, as you can see out of this gamma ray x ray and ultraviolet ray cannot penetrate into earth atmosphere they are blocked by the protective atmosphere of the earth just like ultraviolet radiation are absorbed by the ozone layer you remember using sunscreen lotion for protecting harmful uv rays to reach your skin so the, these rays gamma rays x rays and ultraviolet rays cannot penetrate into earth atmosphere they are blocked by the earth atmosphere next is visible radiation so visible radiation is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eye can see it consists of weak bore sequence so starting from violet to red wavelength violet having lowest wavelength and red having highest wavelength next to visible radiation is infrared radiation so some portion of the infrared radiation can penetrate into our atmosphere this infrared radiation is again divided into different regions like near infrared region nir short wave infrared region swir mid wave infrared region mwir long wave infrared region lwir and very long wave infrared region vlwir so the nir region extends from 0.7 micrometer to 1 micrometer swir region extend from 1 micrometer to 3 micrometer so the mostly reflected infrared radiation lies from you can say near infrared region to some portion of short wave infrared region then from 3 micrometer to 5 micrometer you have mwir that is mid wave infrared region from 5 micrometer to 14 micrometer you have long wave infrared region and from 14 micrometer to 1 millimeter you have very long wave infrared region so this starting from some portion of swir to vlwir this radiation lies in the thermal region of the ir radiation next to ir is the microwave radiation so as you can see in the chart some portion of the microwave radiation can penetrate into earth atmosphere next to microwave is radio waves radio waves can penetrate into earth atmosphere so now we have four types of radiation which can penetrate into earth atmosphere visible infrared some portion microwave some portion and radio waves out of these visible radiation infrared radiation and microwave radiation are mostly used in remote sensing now let us study what happens when this electromagnetic radiation falls on the earth or how the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with the atmosphere or our surrounding takes place so let's have a city say mumbai there is a sun in the sky so sun is our energy source which is emitting electromagnetic radiation 
so the electromagnetic radiation from the sun falls on the ground on the earth surface so on the earth or in the city there are buildings trees lakes various surfaces so when this incident electromagnetic radiation falls on the earth surface what happens some amount of radiation is absorbed some amount of electromagnetic radiation is reflected and some amount of electromagnetic radiation is emitted so mostly the reflected electromagnetic radiation lies in the range of 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer which is in the visible region which we can see that's why for example the trees trees why they appear green because they absorb from visible region they absorb blue and red colors of the visible spectrum and they emit green color they reflect green color that's why green appear that's why trees appear green if you take uh, water why water appears blue because it reflect mostly in the blue regions of the you can say visible radiation next we can also have reflection in the ir region so from 0.7 micrometer to 2.5 micrometer reflected in electromagnetic radiation in near infrared region and short wave infrared radiation can be collected so for example trees if you see trees or vegetation or crop types in ir spectrum they will appear reddish because plants trees or crop reflect more in the infrared region that's why they will see darker in the dark red in the infrared spectrum water has a less reflectance in the infrared region and there are many other factors next is the limited electromagnetic radiation so emitted electromagnetic radiation mostly lies in the 3 micrometer to 16 micrometer region of the ir infrared radiation in electromagnetic spectrum so in the night sun is not there but various objects like land sea water which are get heated due to sun's temperature emits electromagnetic radiation which are mostly in the ir region in the night so these emitted electromagnetic radiation can be captured by sensor again there are events like fire in the jungle or supernova or volcano they can also emit electromagnetic radiations which is in the ir region that can be captured by the sensor now as the incident electromagnetic radiation is coming from sun to the earth there are also clouds dust particles and many things so this some portion of this incident electromagnetic radiation can be scattered by the clouds or atmosphere so that scattered electromagnetic radiation is mostly lies in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum that is from 0.1 cm to 1 mm in the microwave region so now as you can see the picture is clear electromagnetic radiation spectrum divided into seven regions gamma ray x ray ultraviolet which are blocked by the earth atmosphere then we have visible infrared and microwave which can penetrate into earth atmosphere and which are useful in remote sensing so out of this we can have reflected electromagnetic radiation which lies mostly in the visible to near to swir then we have emitted electromagnetic radiation which mostly lies in the thermal infrared region from 3 micrometer to 16 micrometer and we can have scattered electromagnetic radiation in microwave region so all these radiations can be captured by the sensors in the satellite and which can be sent to the receiving stations on the earth for example if we take the reflected electromagnetic radiation so if the electromagnetic radiation which is reflected that is reflectance is plotted as a function of wavelength of electromagnetic radiation then we will get a graph so that graphs are known as spectral signatures so let us study in detail about the spectral signatures so every object on the earth absorbs certain amount of electromagnetic radiation reflects certain amount of electromagnetic radiation and emits certain amount of electromagnetic radiation which is unique so these are known as you can say fingerprint or these are unique 
spectral signature for that component. As you can see in the first diagram is a plot of reflections versus wavelength in micrometer which is a spectral signature. So the blue, green and uh, red are the for the visible spectrum and the, that violet region is for the you can say infrared region. So as you can see you can see the spectral signatures for the soil, green vegetation and water. So for green vegetation, you can see the reflectance is lower in the visible region, but it is higher in the infrared region. For the soil, it is low in the visible region and slightly higher in the infrared region. But if you compare soil with the green vegetation, green vegetation has more reflectance in the infrared regions. Means the you can say the picture or information for green vegetation will be different than that of soil. So picture will be clear and you can differentiate if you record certain piece of land, information of certain piece of land by using sensor. You can differentiate that this is soil, this is green vegetation because their reflectance is different. As for example, for water, in the first image, reflectance of water is stronger in the blue regions of the visible radiation, but it is very low or nearly zero in the infrared radiation. So in the infrared radiation, it will appear as a black spot. So you can identify or you can differentiate between soil, green vegetation and water. So these Landsat channels are for the Landsat remote sensing satellite. Next is the spectral signatures for vegetation, cropland, building, soil and water. So as you can see, the wavelength ranges from 0.5 micrometer to 2.0 micrometer. So 0.5 onwards or 0.7 onwards is the IR region. So green vegetation has a more reflection in the IR region. Then there is a cropland. Then building has still less reflection. Soil has still less reflection. Then water has very low reflection. So all these things can be differentiated as this reflectance will be recorded by a sensor. We have sensor which can record from all these ranges of electromagnetic radiation that is microwave, that is infrared, that is visible radiation. So we can differentiate. Next again have a spectral signature which is a graph of reflectance versus wavelength in micrometer. So it is starting from 0.4 micrometer which is visible region to 2.4 that is IR region. So as you can see from 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer you have visible region blue, green and red. From 0.7 micrometer to 1.4 micrometer you have NIR near infrared and from 1.4 micrometer to 2.5 micrometer you have mid-wave infrared region. So as you can see let us start with the clear lake water which is shown by blue line. So clear lake water has a low reflectance in the infrared region but it has a greater reflectance in the visible region. So it has a peak in the visible region but it has a less reflection in the IR region. So you can differentiate between a water and different kinds of structure. Next is if you add if or there is some impurity in the water there are some dust particle or clay particle so water will be turbid river water so now that water will have a more darker appearance that water will be more visible in the IR region so that water has less reflection in the visible region but it will have a more reflection in the IR region then you can have vegetation. So vegetation has very low reflection in the visible region. That is blue, green, red. But it has a strong reflection in the near infrared region. Then dry soil. So dry soil which is containing 5% of water has very less reflection in the visible and near infrared region. But it has very high reflection in the middle infrared region. Then wet soil which is containing 20% of water so reflection is less. So it is it is again having less reflection in visible and near infrared region but more reflection in the middle infrared region. So that's why this information will be recorded by a sensors and sensors have ability to record the information 
in different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum starting you can record in visible region you can record in infrared region you can record in microwave region which makes it possible to look what human eye can't see we can only see in the visible region but sensors in the satellite or remote sensing sensor can see a broader spectrum of electromagnetic radiation which makes it possible to have a structure to look at a structure more precisely or to look have to have a look at the picture more precisely then let us understand now let's understand in detail about the process of remote sensing so first component of remote sensing is energy source so we must have an energy source so let us consider our sun as an energy source so the sun emits electromagnetic radiation which falls on earth surface let us uh, take this city as a target area which is under study so this city has trees lakes mountains rivers buildings all this we can study then electromagnetic as the sunlight or electromagnetic radiation falls on this target area some will be absorbed some will be reflected some will be emitted so this reflected and emitted radiation will be detected by a sensor which is placed in the satellite so this sensor will detect the electromagnetic radiation it will measure the electromagnetic radiation and it will send the electromagnetic radiation to the receiving stations on the earth now this from this receiving station the electromagnetic radiation or the information is given to the data analysis center where it is processed and finally application so at the last the application information is available in the form of application on your device for example if you want to tree, see the vegetation in the city or the lakes in the city or the buildings in the city sunlight will fall on the city it will be reflected from the building trees or lakes that will be detected by the sensor the sensor will send may will measure and send this signal to the receiving station on the earth this data will be processed and finally if you want to have a map of the city or where are the buildings where are the trees or if you want to have a weather forecast that will be available on your mobile okay so in this video we have discussed about what are the components of remote sensing what are spectral signature and how process of remote sensing takes place so hope you have understood the video so in the next upcoming video we are going to study about types of remote sensing so please stay tuned for the new video and please don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you